let's get into this word heavy this morning. You know, today we're going to focus on how the enemy is attacking so many mothers in this season. We're going to talk about, you know, and I'm sure today's going to be spiritual and practical. We're going to talk some spiritual things, but we're going to also going to talk some practical things. And I believe we're going to be a little transparent today. We're probably going to, knowing me, I'm going to cross some lines, but we're going to talk about some things. I know Pastor Crystal's going to share some things in her heart. Uh, when we were talking about what we wanted to really preach about, locking out of our lives this morning, she had something that she was really concerned about. Not only something I think she's been fighting or she has fought, but she believes so many mothers are fighting. Uh, this morning, you know, so many of you moms right now, you're stuck at home. You're dealing with all the kids and all this stuff. We're on quarantine. Not only are you mom, but you're like a school teacher now. Uh, you're, you're, every, you're everything all, all at once. And if anything reminds me of my wife and her poor life sometimes at home, it's the old commercial that I saw, or maybe it was a show I saw, but they made a commercial out of it, where there's like a, a little boy, and he's following his mom around, and he's like, Mom, 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 Mommy, Mama, Mom, Mother, Mom, Ma, Ma, Mom, E, Ma. It's like, honestly, I got to be honest with you. I'm going to tell a secret here. I do kind of feel bad for Pastor Crystal because, like. You should. You should. <laughs> like, it's and like that. You should do something about it. No, I do. I do. I cook for you. You wouldn't even eat if it wasn't for me. You better calm down. Uh, all I'm saying is that, like, I feel bad because, like, my kids, I love them. Like, and, and we're all, I'm close with all of them. But, like, they place a different demand on me than my wife. Because, first off, a lot of times they're like, Dad, I'm, like, acting like I don't hear. I don't just do that with them, by the way. <laughs> just uh, Anyway, I'm sorry. About to get into men's secrets. We, this is not Father's Day. But let's talk about, let me read something about mothers that many of you heard. But I want to share this, and then I'm going to turn this thing over to Pastor Crystal uh, for a few moments. We're going to go back and forth today. But I want to read something out of Proverbs chapter 31. It's starting in verse 25. It says this. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Charm is deceitful. And beauty is passing. I'll tell you like this. With Pastor Crystal, I have not seen the beauty is passing yet. She's like fine wine. She just keeps getting finer <laughs> and finer uh, with age. And, you know, it, it, hey, that's just the way I see it. And I probably, if, if she doesn't kill me before I'm 75, I'll probably look at her the same way. Uh, but anyway, let's get into this word heavy today. I just want to pray for all the moms before we get started. Uh, and we're going to pray again over you at the end. But... I just, I feel this, um, this burden in my heart today to, to really, and we're going to talk and it's going to be a little fun, but I want us to be serious too, because I need you to understand how important it is for the wrong things to be locked out of your heart and life so that you can be everything God's called you to be. And I know you're under so much pressure. So Father, right now, we just send your word to all of those that are watching us. God, you know everything going on in their life. And for all of our mothers, God, we pray, God, that this morning you would just send an extra special measure of care and allow your spirit to move mightily in their life. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> amen. You know, you got, the word of God is very plain. You have so much authority, so much power, so much ability, so much influence on your children, both your natural and your spiritual children. But how many of you would acknowledge it is not easy to be a mom? This morning, we want to focus on the pressure and activities of being a mother. And today, I want to talk, we're going to talk about the things that flat wear you out. So Pastor Crystal, tell them what we want to keep locked out of their houses this morning. And I'd like for you to fill in a little bit some of your reality of what it is to be a mom, especially in this season. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I kept my happy Mother's Day to all the, the mothers out there. We definitely have a, a special word for you today, and including myself. This is something that I have 
dear to my heart. Um, I have my phone near me, you guys, so that I can see your comments, your questions, the love coming from the phone here, um, despite the delay that's coming um, through it. But I'm excited to be here. You know, um, when, when I found out that I was speaking for Mother's Day and it was going to be a joint thing, I just asked, you know, God, what is what would you have me say to all the moms? And, and he just kept bringing weariness. And so we're in our lockdown series. So today we are going to uh, talk about ways we can lock down weariness in our lives. And if you are a mom right now, you cannot tell me that you are not, that there has not been a time in this past two months that you have been tired, that you feel like you are, listen, that you are completely weary. Um, I looked up weary in the dictionary, and it says physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, strain, fatigued, or tired, impatient, or dissatisfied with something. And I looked it up also in the thesaurus, and it says, these are words that describe or are that uh, are synonyms for weariness: exhausted, fatigued, overworked, beat, bushed, uh, drained, enervated, spent, taxed, bone tired, bone tired, burnt out, dead tired, dog tired, dog done, tired. fed up, knocked out, out of gas, pooped, sick and tired. What? Wiped out, worn out, or completely zonked. Have you as a mom, and you know, I don't think it's just moms either. I think it's Oops. just parents maybe in general as well, but just completely done, done. Can I feel some love in the comments right now that you, <laughs> I have a couple here in the sanctuary saying, yes, I'm completely pooped, zonked out. Um, but this is what we're going to talk about today, and I want to talk about not just the spiritual implications of weariness, but also the natural implications, and I want to come today from um, two points of scripture today, Exodus 18 and also Daniel 7. All right, so we, um, in Exodus 18, we see here Moses, it's eight, uh, Exodus 18, 13 to, through 23, Okay. So it says, and I'm going to read this for you real quick. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and laws. Moses, I want you to note here, Mo, Moses' father-in-law replied in, in verse 17, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will wear only yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice, and may God be with you. And then it goes on to talk about where his father-in-law tells him about uh, the organization or the structure of leadership when it comes to delegation. And he told him to appoint certain leaders within the group to um, be able to handle certain matters at a certain level and only those high-level things to come to him. And we're not – I could easily go into a leadership – uh, leadership talk about this, about organizational structure and delegation. But today I want us to focus on verse 17, where he says, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle this alone. All right. And so one thing, you know, that uh, through, through church, many times we focus on the spiritual. And there is no we, we cannot negate the fact that there is a spiritual attack that the enemy will put on you to wear you out, to wear you out. I, all, I heard it said one time, if the enemy can't take you out, he will wear you out. Mm -hmm. If he can't take you out, he, he's going to wear you out. Mm -hmm. And he does that through the spirit of weariness, the spirit of tired. And I don't know about you, but this season has made me completely tired, you guys. Um, then and where we get the spiritual implication is in Daniel 7, 25, and it says, um, the enemy will speak words against the most high God and wear down the saints of the most high, and he will intend to change the times and the laws. So we cannot negate that fact that the enemy, he will attack your life to wear you out. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
Also, we found in Exodus, Exodus that Jethro actually gave him practical advice. And so um, I, today we want to talk about some spiritual things and also some practical ways to fight weariness in our life. Can we do that with you guys? Is that okay? Can we kind of have just some table talk today? Somebody say, help me out. <laughs> help me out in the comment because I need this. You know, we've been in quarantine on lockdown. And I don't know about you, but I just, I told Pastor Sean a couple of weeks ago, you know, the first two to three weeks was really tough. Can you attest to that? It was just really tough, and, and everything was just everything was just bleeding together. There was no boundaries. Usually, you know, whenever your kids are at school, you're at work, you have your work time, you can get your things done, right? And then when you come home, then it's family time, and, and, and there's compartments to your life. But what's happened is all these compartments, all the walls have come down, and it's just utter chaos, Right? And so, um, you know, and it's... And, it, and that's it took, a big problem for a woman. It is a very big problem for a woman, right? Because everything's connected. Yeah, everything... In a woman's world, every, women and men are different. Hello, you, you guys are human and, and understand this. I don't care what people try to tell you. Uh, men and women are different. We were, we were built different. We have different <clears throat> chemical reactions to things. Our, how our lives genuinely work is different. A, a man is designed by God to be able to compartmentalize everything. I always joke about it when we talk in marriage conferences and all these type of things, which, by the way, I'm sure that Ray's probably watching. If Ray, if you're watching Ray Robinson, you need to get Hank right now and tell him, Pastor Sean and Pastor Crystal are doing what you tell him to do all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hank is always on me like, about that, so I, I just want to say hello, shout out in case you're watching. But I, I want to share this. I say this in marriage conference seminars often when we, whenever we get invited to do anything like that, that a man's brain, a man's life is like a big waffle. You know, it's like there's compartments. This doesn't affect that. This doesn't affect that. This has no impact on that. But a woman's brain in her life is like a big bowl of spaghetti. It's like once it all gets mixed up together, this is touching that thing and that's touching that thing and, and all these things matter. So like for me, this lockdown has not been as difficult but for different reasons, uh, because for me, the difficulty in the lockdown, it really has me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Um, I was trying to keep it spiritual right now, and, and you're trying to take me into the flesh. But um, here's the thing, <laughs> the, the, that has been a challenge. But the, the hardest thing for me is, is I'm a very extroverted person. So not being able to, like, for example, be with the church people and be with people and all that stuff, that's been difficult. Uh, some of the, you know, some of my political sensibilities have been slapped in this season, so I got that thing I'm working with. But when it comes down to it, you know, I feel like in some respects, you know, I've actually had to focus on some things and work more than, than what I was even doing before. But for my wife, this has been somewhat horrible, I'm sure, in some places, because in her world, everything connects, and she can't escape. Like, she can't escape those children, and <laughs> not just the children. I mean, like, she's back in school as well. So she's doing papers. She's doing projects. She's doing these things. And, and the one thing about Pastor Crystal, she's always busy. There's, you know, there, there's not a, a lazy bone in her body. She doesn't even understand the concept of being lazy. She, matter of fact, she's an overworker and an overachiever. She's a tryhard. And, uh, and, some, <laughs> and so in some respects, that can be not good. The enemy can We're twist that as that. well. But I'm, not, I'm not here to try to get her delivered today. I'm here to try to get you guys delivered. Uh, some of you want to get her delivered. I'm asking you to do that. I can only go so far with that. But uh, anyway, no. <laughs> Everything is connected. So it's, it's hard for so many moms right now that's watching this. You feel tired. Like you feel wore out. Like Pastor Crystal said, if the enemy can't, can't destroy you, if he can't take you out, he'll wear you out. And that's true. I mean, sometimes, you know, the Bible says it this way. The Bible says to don't get weary when doing the right thing or don't get do weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap as long as you don't quit or as long as you don't faint or as long as you don't give up. But how many of you know it's easy to quote stuff, but it's not always easy to live it. And so what happens is many times the Bible says this, that when hope gets deferred, the heart becomes sick. And since we're talking about keeping our heart in quarantine and protected, 
We have to know the things that will get into our heart and make us sick. Hope deferred. Let me say it to you in a Pastor Sean modified way. God shows you something you're not walking in yet. Or there's something you believe is attainable, but you, you can't seem to step into it. Or there's a new season you shout and sing about, but never get in. And so the longer we wait and the longer we get delayed and delayed and things happen, what happens is it makes our hearts sick and we get tired. And you get wore out. So, listen, I hate to admit this, but there's been times in my life I feel like my faith was worn out. Like, I'm tired of believing God for this or for that when it hasn't happened yet. Like, the enemy will try to wear you out. He'll try to make you quit. He'll try to make you give up. But the, the thing is, we have to keep sowing the right seed. And here's one thing I've told our staff numerous times. Tired will always reign supreme in your life if you don't challenge it. If you don't make a specific attack against tired, tired will win. I promise you that. that. Tired will win. You have to be serious about attacking tired. And before we go today, we're going to give you some ways to do it. But let me share this one more thing. When you're tired, you're vulnerable. When you're tired, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable to negative thoughts. You're vulnerable to attacks of the enemy. You're, vul you're especially vulnerable to your own flesh. Any of you that's ever done counseling, been in counseling, seen a counselor, I'm sure I've heard this acronym that I probably should preach about in the future. So while Brother Matt's sitting here writing stuff down, he's probably going to take it and preach it before I get to. There's an acronym they use that they call HALT, H-A-L-T. And I, I believe it's a hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. If you have any of those four doors open, your flesh is susceptible to the wrong things. Most people watching me today that want to live free from, from any kind of addiction, any, whether it's drugs or whether it's uh, pornography or anything you're trying to avoid, if you have a halt situation you don't deal with, many times that leads you into the thing you're doing. So this morning, I know we're going to talk about some practical things, but I don't want you to take this topic lightly. Right. I need you to understand, Mom, that when you're tired, your, your door is open for other things and other activities right. in your life. I am sick and tired of this man. And so now all of a sudden you're talking to a coworker that, trust me, doesn't really want to be your friend and listen to all your stories. He's an opportunist. Right. Want to have lunch with you. No. I'm just saying, many times it's when we're tired mm -hmm. and we're wore out that we're susceptible to the things of the enemy. And trust me when I tell you, we're all susceptible. Pastor Crystal, I know you have some things you want to share with people about um, some ways that we get stuck in weariness and ways we can fight weariness. So let's, let's get into that. Let, let me give you a few things real quick, and then we're going to get into that, some spiritual things. So I want to give you some signs, just real quick, that you could be under a spiritual attack or that, that your spirit is tired. Because that's what we want to talk about first. Like, what do I do when I'm spiritually tired? I'm wore out like Pastor Crystal was saying. There, there are a bunch of signs, and I just wrote a few down. There, there's tons. But write these down if you're taking notes real quick. If you, are, if you experience unexplained physical issues that even doctors can't figure out, that can be the sign of a spiritual attack or something else going on, and you could be tired. Sometimes being tired opens the door to other things. Uh, I know Pastor Crystal years ago had something that blew, I'd never seen this before, and I know I've had them since too, but you know, if you've ever had a panic attack, uh, sometimes stuff like that, you're open to stuff like that when you're tired. It, you know, you're frustrated or you're wore out or, or you don't see hope. That hope's been deferred. Um, when you're tired, another sign that you're tired and spiritually fighting is you don't want to step up to the plate. You don't want to face challenges. There are some challenges that you are anointed to overcome. If you're not stepping up to the plate and meeting that challenge, and you rather complain about someone else not doing what you see needs to be done that you should be stepping up to do, and you're complaining about it, then that's a good sign you could be under attack. If you can't sleep, that should be pretty practical. You could be under attack, and your spirit is under attack. You're tired. If you feel exhausted, no matter how much sleep you get, 
That's just as much of a sign. And I know people, I mean, that's a, you can be spiritually fatigued. You're in a battle. We're in a fight. This whole series is about how the enemy is fighting, trying to knock on the door of your life and trying to get in. If you're feeling lonely, real lonely, could be a sign. Feeling weak and unmotivated. And also, here's another thing, and you're not going to like this, and I'm not even going to speak to this heavy. I'm just going to say it and let Pastor Crystal go because this one makes me nervous especially with the women that are in the building right now. Amplified emotions. <laughs> let, me, let me say it how I want. <laughs> even little things will set you off. And you're kirking out over something that don't even make sense to me. I'm a man. This don't affect that. And you're kirking out. I mean, you're going, I'm going to look at the camera. You're going flat crazy. You're going wild. Amplified emotions. Like, how did we get here? Zero to a hundred, real quick, real quick, Christian. All right, so go ahead. Now you're going to turn that over right there. <laughs> turn it over on Drake. <laughs> well, oh, how, how do I how do I come off of that? Yeah, there's definitely signs that we show that can show that we're weary. Um, what you just said, I have. You know, we make bad decisions. Cool. Um, we overeat and overspend. We're Hold up. Move on fast, because that's oh, where the, I'm at the, right now. What you call it? The COVID what? The COVID? I'm, the listen, COVID-15 COVID for COVID me. COVID-15. I'm overeating <laughs> and overspending. You know, Pastor Crystal always jokes with me. She sends me the meme of the little girl. She said, that's what it's like to raise me. I'm at the window just throwing money out. <laughs> well, we're going to get to that. We're gonna, we don't get ahead of ourselves. Uh, I'm trying to get her free from her weariness this morning. When we're weary, we can be grouchy. We, uh, uh, we can feel sorry for ourselves. We lose control of our mind, our emotions, and our mouth. Um, <laughs> we give up on things. Uh, tend not to resist temptation. So let's get to the, these are some the signs that we're weary. These are some of the things that we default to when we get tired or we get wearied. I'm, can you move that? I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Your notes, so my bad. from a practical stance, you know, just as Jethro gave Moses a practical idea of what to do, one of the biggest ways to fight weariness that I found is by one simple word, by by using this Can I one say simple real word. Because I want to, I want to help set you free right now. No, so, no, the Lord's speaking to me right now. I have to say this: nothing we say today is not spiritual as well. Like I know we said we're going to be practical and spiritual, but everything Pastor Crystal's about to tell you is spiritual. The Lord just downloaded this to me while she was talking. This is what I heard the Lord say to me. He said uh, very, very plainly that too many Christians want to be spiritual when what they need is discipline. Mm -hmm. And what Pastor Crystal's about to break out to you, and I'm looking at all these notes and I'm getting nervous. What she's about to break out to you is natural discipline. Mm, it's good. practical discipline. It does not have to be the, the, the deep words of Pastor Sean uh, breaking down to you what the Greek really means in this text. Sometimes we got to look into what is the practical aspect of this. And I want to tell you that what she's about to give you is some real spiritual nuggets because they're practical application to how we can grow and not be weary. So go ahead. The first right, word is right. you got to learn it. Learn it. The first word I want you to say right now, if, if someone's even around you or you got to shout it out in your own room by yourself, just let it out. drop it in the comments, just let it out is the word no, right? The word no. Can you say that with me? No. One, two, three. No. 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 Saying no, so many times we're afraid to say no, that we create this, uh, we do it to ourselves. A lot of times it's not the enemy. We do it to ourselves. I find myself doing this, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and I've actually done a better job in the past, probably the past two years, but always having something to do. I, I work off of lists, and so, you know, right? I, we work off of, some of us work off of lists, and so we keep piling things to our list. You know, even at work, you know, you know they, you may go around the round table and say, this needs to be done, and you're the first one to say, well, I'll do it because you know that you can do it with excellence, that you can get it done. And so, um, you know, you keep adding things. And I was actually listening to your um, your Connect group, which, by the way, Connect groups are going, and you can join them. They're online, and you can join right in the middle of our Connect 
connect, connect groups. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, but I heard somebody say that uh, they're afraid to say no to their family. And I have written down here, no is not rejection. No is just setting boundaries. And that's one of the things that we have to do in our lives, even as moms, as people in general, with relationships with people is saying no. Um, and setting those boundaries with people. And so many times we, we're afraid to say no to the people that are closest to us because we feel like we're letting them down. Um, and so I know as a, mo- as a mom, I feel this a lot because I, I, anyone have mom guilt? You know, you, you don't, you don't, not you me. can't say no to your, he's a no one. Uh, like, no, not a no, no one, but he's a no, no. He's a no dad, right? The kids don't go to him because they know he's going to say no. So they, they come to mom, you know, um, dad, can we go eat Arby's today? Or can no, we, can yes we do, oh, like you that. say yes to that. <laughs> I mean, I've COVID-15. You know, can you help me put this together? Or they'll ask these requests of I him. I do those things. You better find something else. <laughs> I'm not making you, you seem like, like a deadbeat dead dad. dad. I'm you're a, not I'm a involved. deadbeat dad, but come on, moms, you know what I'm talking about. And dads, if you're real, you know that you'll shrug it off and say, you know, we'll do it later. Maybe it's a personality thing between certain person that, personalities between moms and dads. But I know as for me, I, I suffer from a lot of mom guilt, you know, because in my mind as a mom, you know, you, you know you have 18 years with them babies. And, you know, once them 18 years are, are done, then they're off on their own. And, you know, you got to use these 18 years wisely and you got to just make the best of it. And, you know, you always have these things running through your mind. You don't want to let your kids down. And, um, you know, I, I talked about um, on a weekly devotional, hopefully um, – He's not listening too much, but my son wanted this hamster, and I told oh him no. no. We're not going to go there, out. right? Um, oh, my days. <laughs> but he wanted this hamster, and he just kept on and kept on. What did dad the point, say? What did dad say? Well, da- well, dad said yes that time, but it was against mom's no. But um, We was in Petco before I realized that mom had really said no. We were, I mean, we were, we, I was grabbing a hamster. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, and... I'm still going to get him a hamster, by the way. We're just not... We'll talk about that later. (laughs) We're not going to go there right now. We're going to set some boundaries. Um, But, you know, I suffer from a lot of... If you want Kai to get a hamster, liberate him in the comments today. Stop, please. Where is my child? He's somewhere around here. Um, (laughs) Stop. Um, You know the reason why I said no to that, okay? Because I'm thinking future. Because I'm not a no mom. I, I don't... I don't... You know, I'm the type of mom who, yes, yeah, sure, go outside, get dirty. You're supposed to go out there and have fun. It's not, everything is not always no. But I think about the future. So I'm thinking, you know, sooner or later this hamster is going to be my responsibility. And we are, I already have two responsibilities on top of the other responsibilities with two dogs. So I'm just thinking this is going to be money that I'm going to have to shell out for hamster food and all this. I'm just thinking about in a month when he's done with the hamster, who's going to be cleaning it. And all these things. So I'm thinking practical, you know, like if you want to hear more about that, go to the Destination Church page later after this and you'll see my whole devotion on that. Oh, like, <laughs> about, about, I'm, I'm thinking we're going live later over this. No, no, hamster no, live. but, Join but us creating, creating hamster, boundaries in our lives is, is a really big issue because um, we can eliminate some of the stress that we put on ourselves. And it's by by saying no. You know, I know there's been times where I've been stressed and someone will ask me to do something and I don't want to let my friends down or, you know, I'll be in the uh, middle of, of doing something, um, you know, working and my kids, will, especially now, my kids are around all the time. So they're making their requests known to me all the time and coming to me and, you know, I'll find myself feeling like I have to do it so I don't let my kids down or I'll have to do something because I don't want to let, you know, the people around me. But creating one? that creating that boundary um, or you're afraid to hurt people's feelings, you know, by, by saying no. Somebody may ask you to do something. And a lot of sometimes, here, here's the thing. Sometimes you have to have some tough love, okay? When your child comes to you the night before a project's due. I'm sick of your tough love. And saying, and saying I, I got to get this done. Well, the mom guilt comes in. You don't want your, your son or your daughter to get a bad grade or, or fail the class or whatever, right? It always happens that day. They always remember the day before it's due. So you're, you're going to Michael's or Walmart and getting all the project material, and you push everything on your agenda side to, to uh, be able to, to do this when it was poor planning on your son or daughter. 
And so I said, instead of saying, I'm sorry, you should have, you should have done it yourself. You know, you had three months to do this. You're not, you're not going to do this and let them learn the hard way. Here you are, you know, and trying then go to. Fight, then go fight the teacher over the bad grade. Right, right. So, you know. Do what you want in that situation. I've done it many times. But the fact is, um, we do have to create those healthy boundaries. Um, and especially with our kids, teaching them that you can't always say yes. And I, I think that because I was raised so strict where everything was a no, I kind of parent opposite in a way to where I'm like, you know, I'm not going to tell my kids no to every single thing, you know, to where everything is a, is a, is a, is a wrong or a no or whatnot. So... Do you want to add anything about saying no, creating these boundaries with our relationships? Because you do, you get added stress. No, I, I don't want to. I think you did a fine job with that. And I know I preach so much on boundaries. It's like people are like, here he goes on boundaries again. I, I should be the boundary preacher. Uh, but I, I just feel like that in the kingdom of God, one of the greatest ways to discipline your life is to learn to have boundaries and to learn when to say no. And like Pastor Crystal is saying, you don't just become the no mom. We kind of joke about that. But, you know, the fact is there are sometimes you do need to learn how to separate for yourself to, uh, and we're going to talk more about that when we get to what to do to help heal you. But the next thing I know that we wanted to really get into was, you know, sometimes we get tired because we refuse to uh, give up control of, of our world. It's, you know, and I'll, I'll say this, we all have our own proclivities and issues. I preach all the time, so most of you know most of my junk and drama because I put it out there. But Pastor Crystal, uh, she does it, so I'm actually going to talk about her junk and drama for a minute so that y'all can know all of ours. But, um, you know, <laughs> one of her things is control. Like, she struggled with that. She's even told me, and I'm like, no, really? <laughs> like, she's, like, confessed to me. I just I feel like I have control issues. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, what? I just I can't see that. Uh, what? You don't really need to pack an 88-pound suitcase for a two-and-a-half-day trip? No, you don't have to control what I put in my bag as well. No. Uh, <laughs> I do that, don't I? Uh, I I'll go through his bag and see what he has. To Sometimes make sure. <laughs> you have to give up control of some things and trust that other people can do stuff. The problem when you're, when you're someone like Pastor Crystal with her personality and her ideas of, of excellence and control and getting stuff done is if you're not careful, the enemy will use that to cause you to be a person that you're going to get it done no matter what. And what happens is it makes other people around you lazy because they won't do what they should be doing. They'll pass the buck off on you <laughs> to get it done. And the other thing is sometimes it causes you to overexert yourself to control things because it has to be a certain way. And, and, and we all want things excellent and all things to do it right. We all want to do that. But the truth is we need to understand that sometimes we have to rain out. You know, and some of you moms right now, you know, maybe you need to, instead of doing everything for your kids, maybe ha you know, your, your kid's 15, he bare minimum could be taking Let your trash out. Let should, be, <laughs> should be mowing your grass. There, there's things other people can do that we won't relinquish it because we're in control of everything. Right. This has got to, the pot's got to stack this way, and the, it's got, this has got to be done this way. And man, you need to, if it, you're that serious about it, then teach someone how to do it right. right. And, and then overview them. You show them. Then you teach them, walk them through it. Then you watch them, and once they get it right, you let them fly. Teach people in such a way that you grow them. And this is not just the home. This is any area of your life. Relinquish some control, and it'll help you not feel tired all the time. Right, so... Yes, I am controlling. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of my personality, and I have to fight against that. But I, I'm learning how to relinquish that control because now I'm aware of it. Um, and what I'm doing is self-sabotaging myself. You know, I'm creating more work for myself because I'll go behind my kids or, you know, instead of letting them do it, um, I, I want it to be done right. And we're going to talk about perfectionism here in a minute, releasing ourselves from that because that adds a lot of stress too. Um, but giving up that control. I remember we were packing, was it last year for the beach? And I've used this example before, but we were packing um, on the way for the beach. And I like it done a certain way. It makes sense. Everything fits. We don't have to, you know, everyone could be at peace and have their space. So, you Pastor me Sean. Anxiety right Pastor now. Why, why? I just don't want to talk about certain things with you. <laughs> so, 
He's out there, and he's like, let's, let's start putting everything in the... I, listen, I'll come home. I'll come home and be like, well, by the way, we're going on vacation tonight. Right, right. And that, <laughs> don't give me that's life with, That's life with Pastor Sean. Let's go, baby. We're out of here. And I, and I can't function like that. But <laughs> there's more stress on my plate right there. <laughs> but... He said, okay, we're going we're gonna to pack, go ahead and get everything, we're going to pack the car. Well, I don't like to pack the car until everything is, is complete. Because if my big suitcase is not done, then that's the one that goes on the bottom, and you're trying to put it on the top, and then the kids need their suitcase. And it, it, it just, it's just a world. I see all the ones that are thinking like me, clapping and giving hearts, right? <laughs> like, okay, so this past, this past summer, I think it was two years ago, actually, I've been free of this from, from this packing mentality. If but he you, says, if you've been free, I haven't <laughs> seen it yet. And it's probably because <laughs> I'm so scarred over 20 years of relationship with you that I just like, you know how like when someone fails you in a marriage or something and, and like Stop. literally they have to show you over time that it's different? Like, I, I just feel like I have... Maybe I just haven't seen it yet. Are you better? Possibly. So he wanted to pack the trunk. Anyway, we'll, we'll get off of this real quick. He wanted to pack the trunk. And so, call it the Holy Spirit. Call it my intuition. Call it, you know, him knowing how he is. Something was just like, just let him pack it. Let him figure it out for himself. Oh, that was Jesus. Why are you, why are you, why are you stressing yourself out? Just let him do it. And if it fails, it fails and he'll learn, you know, or he'll, he'll, he'll do it right. Come to find out, here I am. He packed it a different way, but it still worked. It was not oh, my way, but it still, it actually Shonda, was right a little there, better than what I, right what I would have done. Praise him. Praise him. <laughs> Hearts like sow seed right on it. <laughs> right there. All my brothers watching right now. Sow a seed right now. So, but we, sometimes we put extra stress on ourselves. That's true. And we're afraid to either relinquish that control. One scripture in the Bible that I really have leaned heavy on the past uh, several years is train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's older, he won't depart from it. How many of you still do the same things a same way because that's how your mama did it? Can you, can you test to that? Like, you, you fold your towels this way because this is how my, my mom taught me. Or, you know, you uh, load the dishwasher is a big one in our home. This is the way... There's a right way. Agree with me if there's a right and a wrong way to load the dishwasher, Listen, in right? my house, if you even put the <laughs> dishes in the wrong side of the sink, and I'll be honest with you, can I confess confessions of a guilty pastor? Like, sometimes I put the stuff in the wrong place just because. To annoy me. <laughs> to add stress to my weirdness. Hey, I mean, we've been married 20 years. we got to keep it happy, right? But we how got, many of you still... Sometimes it's worth a good fight if we go have a good makeup. Um, but how many of you are still doing things the same way because that's the way that, you know, your mama did it, your daddy taught you or whatnot? So taking into the scripture, now I used to uh, do everything for my kids. I was that mom, you know, I, I don't want them to have to do it. But then God really quickened me. He really uh, challenged me and rebuked me like, you should be teaching your kids this, you know, and so... My kids now have chores. Well, they've had chores for a while. But, uh, you know, I've taught them to do their own laundry and to uh, mow the grass and to wash the car and vacuum and Not load the dishwasher. And, the um, you know, Pastor Sean, this is one thing he's particular yeah, about I'm is the, the, um, the lawn, you know, is, is, is making sure it's, it's in okay, the stripes. Let's, let's move on to the next one because Listen, you're, seriously, no, you're, you're going to bring out my problems. And this is Mother's Day. But I told him, I said, you're so particular about the lawn, but, and, and Jace, he's, he's all about the entrepreneurial life, so he wants to learn to mow grass so he can go around the neighborhood and, and earn money, which I, I love that, you know. So I've taught him to mow the grass, but the lines aren't, you know, they're not great, and he's learning, right? But we're teaching him a skill uh, of a way to earn income, but also we're teaching him something that will follow with him, but it's not going to be perfect. What I'm trying to say is, Teach your kids how to do things. It will, it will lessen the stress, you know, and then go back and go back and, and teach them some more. But here, here's the thing that if we want our children to, if we want to raise healthy, independent children, we have to start when they're young. And that will release su such a stress. Now, Kai, I mean, he does the chores so good. He's been taught the, the right way how to load, load, uh, load a dishwasher. And, <laughs> um, but... 
giving up that control, you guys, that, that's the biggest thing is, is giving up that control and also asking for help. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are times when one thing, I'm constantly cleaning, 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 and it just drives me crazy. And because everything's connected, I cannot sit down and do my work, especially right now, do my schoolwork, do my, uh, my work work, because the house is messy. Every, everything is connected. And see, with him, while he was in school, which congratulations to Pastor Sean. He just um, earned his Master's of Divinity from Regent University. You guys, give him some love. Um, but he's able to sit in the living room with all the chaos going on, all the noise, all the kids going crazy, Selena doing cartwheels in the middle of the living room, you know, and the dogs running around. And he's able to sit there and study and just be in his own world and just... I I'm mean, in a different is, compartment in my waffle. For me, I cannot do that. I, I, he, I mean, he's in his own world and while the rest of the world is turning around, around his world, you know, and flipping upside down. And for me, when I have to study, I, I cannot be around all that. It, it, and even for me, working from home is, 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 is hard. So there are times when I have to say, hey, can you help me with this? Do you, do you want to do this? I'm going to give you something, wives, women. One thing I've learned to get, you know, maybe your husbands just aren't getting it yet, you know, that you need help around the house and what some of the responsibilities of the home. What I do is a this or that. I call it the this or that um, uh, effect here, the, the method, the this or that effective. So I don't give my husband a choice not to help me, okay? I don't say, do you want to do the dishes tonight. No, no. I know the dishes need to be done and Selena needs a bath or Selena needs to get ready for bed. So I don't want to have to do both. I say, do you want to help Selena get ready for bed or do you want to clean the kitchen? There is no, the, the option is not yes or no. It is A or B. So let that help you out if you, if you're, but don't be afraid to ask for help, especially if you're a single mom. You know, uh, one, one of the things is don't be afraid to ask the people around you, your, your family or your friends, uh, for help. I have a friend who's a single mom, and she said, I just hate asking my family for help. But, you know, that's what, that's what family does is, is we help each other out. I mean, that's what a church family does. So That's right. All right, so giving up that control. The next one. Uh, the next one we're going to go through real fast just because. I, it annoys me. But All right. Hopefully this is helping you guys. Yep. Uh, the next one is... Get organized. Like when you're organized, it, it removes a lot of stress and pressure off your life. I, I liken it to planning. Like anytime you set something in motion, you really need to plan it. And the planning also is what creates the boundary that helps you flow into it. So being organized and getting organized in your life. And I know it might be hard. Some moms watching this are really under pressure right now because it feels like you don't need like just whatever. I'm just trying to survive this whole quarantine stuff. So, but when you're organized and you got systems in place, it helps you grow to the next level. I learned a long time ago the only difference between a, a hundred dollar organization and a multi million dollar organization is systems. The systems and structure, right? Those things create the flow for blessing. And so, in every area of your life, you either have a vision. Some of you watching this right now, you're a mom. But you know in your heart God's also called you to have a business. How can you be a full-time business owner, full-time mom, full-time Christian and all that without systems? You have to have systems in place. This is what I give my time to. This is what I give this to. And getting organized will help not to wear you out. I know my wife, it drives her crazy if stuff's just, you know, all over the place. And so, like, <laughs> for example, I have a chair in my room that's my chair, but it's just sitting there. And so I throw a lot of my clothes on that chair. <laughs> like, that chair is like my coat hanger. And so I throw stuff on that, especially if I, if I plan on wearing it again before I wash it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a man. It is what it is. If I'm wearing that tomorrow because I'm doing some work and, you know, and I, this shirt was clean today, it's already a little dirty. Tomorrow I'm out mowing grass. Might want to throw that bad boy on, get an extra day out of it. That's where it's going before it goes in the hamper. You know what I mean? I, and I know that stuff will drive you crazy, but when you have a system in place, to me, that's my system. If not that, back in the day we first got married, you got, I might have a, cl uh, a trail of clothes through my room that you got to deal with and draws on the flow and all kinds of stuff. We still have a trail of clothes so, in some places. It's, but it's, not, I mean, it's, not, <laughs> it's not what it was. God has delivered me a little bit. So I've tried to be better just because I don't want to drive her crazy. 
But the thing is, when you get organized about certain things, you know, and that, that even makes it worse in my household because my wife knows that if I want to be extreme about something or organized or whatever, I can do it. And I think that kind of makes it worse because that, in her world, that tells her he don't even want to fix this thing that's bugging me because I know he can. It'd be different if, like, I just had under compulsion, just could never keep myself a certain way. But the truth is I can. But anyway, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to do me. But you do you, boo. But here's the thing. Get organized. So, yes, like, and this is, this is so, I'm, I'm talking about the little things. Now, maybe, like, I'm a more organized person than Pastor Sean. But I do know that when he has organized uh, some things, he says he feels so much, like, phew, that, that's better. I mean, I've had... I don't really have stacks of papers everywhere and stuff like that, but um, I did know that I had this this filing cabinet that was just overflowing, and I just needed to throw some stuff out. And any time that you know he needed a paper from our taxes, or we needed something for a bill, or something like that, um, I was disorganized in that part of my life. And a couple of weeks ago, I just spent about an hour or two. Uh, this this uh, file cabinet is in our, in my closet. And so I went in there and organized stuff. So the other day he came and he asked me for a paper for when we uh, bought our house. And before, I mean, everything was just in the wrong place just because I kept throwing stuff in there, which is really out of my nature. But I went through and I organized and it just made me feel so much at peace because I could find what I needed. But that's in, every, that's in little things. Now, everyone has different personalities, but creating a system. If you're constantly losing your keys, this may not speak to anyone. <laughs> hey. But here's the deal. You put stress. Listen what it says. This is a perfect segue into the Don't scripture. Stress me out. Okay? Yeah, In the scripture, not only did it say that that Moses was not only going to wear himself out, but it says that he will wear the people around him out. And many times when we're disorganized, especially as being a unit or a member of the family, um, as, as a parent, you can stress other people out with your disorganization. And if every morning you know I've got to look, at? if every morning I've hey, got to look for your keys you know my for 30 at? minutes because you, you don't know wallet? where it's at, if you would just follow the system that I have with right when you walk through the door, you put your keys right there on that hook that says keys, then we wouldn't have to go through this every morning. Can I get an amen? I'm bringing trauma Amen. Up. Do, amen. Do you know where <laughs> There's my a system. wallet is. Have you seen my wallet? But, but creating a system. Now, as you can say, I could be a little over, over, over dramatic, overkill for some of these things, but having systems in your life um, can, can help. Even a grocery list. We keep a, a running grocery list on our refrigerator just so that at the end of, you know, if anyone needs something, they put it on the grocery list. So whenever I go to the grocery store, I'm not spending 30 minutes trying to figure out on my own. I know what we need. So organization, schedules, calendars. There's so many. There's an app for that, you know, of, 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 of staying together and, and being organized. Um, Guys, but hold on. But I wanted to talk about one thing to get organized in. Um, and yes, there's balance to this, but I want to talk about money for a minute. Okay, oh, you guys, because money can be the biggest stressor in your life and money affects everything. It can affect everything. Um, and there are stresses that you have in your life that you don't realize, and it's flowing out of your disorganization and your mismanagement of your money. And too many times in our church settings, we focus so much about, you know, giving, uh, giving in one way that we're not talking about the management of our money in another way. And so, and there's so many scripture, you, you guys, about money management. But here's the thing I wrote down. We don't need more money. We need to manage the money that we have. Okay, and I'm not going to go Dave Ramsey on you because that's an amazing program oh, and it's no, based on biblical. That that's a whole page. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. That's for something else. Okay, but here's the deal: getting organized in our money. Um, so we we had. I'll, I'll talk about this real quick without getting too personal. But this is our testimony. We had this. His face just went from a smile. To a, a serious look just right now. <laughs> Are you guys uh, still with us? Yes, they're with us. They're with us. Okay. So, um, he, uh, we, had, we had this, this large credit card debt, you know, or maybe it's for you it's a student loan, but we had this huge credit card debt. And it was something that, 
you know, we had accumulated, I'll say we had accumulated, and it was, it was hanging over our head. And so once we finally had paid it off, it was a, a big amount, once we finally paid it off, Pastor Sean, he said, oh, I feel such a relief. Like, I can finally go to bed not thinking about it. I didn't even realize that he was, it was hanging over his head For to, that, years. to that degree that this, this card, we kept having to use this card because we were not organized in our money. No, that's not why it just happened. Okay, well, it wasn't just because there we were blowing it off. There bills, having to pay for stuff. We, it wasn't, the, it, look, hold up. Right, no, no. right. I don't want to give anyone a reason to think because when she says a big bill, it wasn't a big bill like some people have big bills. Right, it wasn't right. like over $10,000. That's not the point. The point is that it, you know, we had things arise in our life that we hadn't planned for, and that if we'd have planned and managed our money better beforehand, we'd have had the money for, and we didn't. So you know, when you got to pay for, you get sick, and or you know, have an emergency in the dentist, two thousand dollars here and this and there, it's like it's almost impossible sometimes to pay that stuff off. Right. And so like I didn't tell her because I was carrying the weight of this credit card for years because I know how she thinks about money. So I was actually being secretive about it. I, you know, I would get the bill, and I would do this and that, and, and man, when we finally paid it off, that's why I was like, man, this is, this feels great, um, you know, because unexpected things would come up, so we're sharing our testimony, but I don't want to give people the impression right. that it's okay to be out using credit cards, or oh, no, it wasn't no, no, nothing no. like that, so. No, no, and, and, and actually the Bible is, it, it goes against using credit cards as your, as your financial stream. Um, there, there's so many scriptures that I've written down, but, you know, we, I mean, having credit card debt makes you a slave. It makes you a, a slave to the lender. And, um, you know, God wants us to live free from that hanging over you. And also, too, we need to manage our money um, our money well. You know, the Bible has so much to say that, and I know that you're wanting to move move on. Well, I'm just worried about our time because we're, we're way out there, and so I don't know. I don't want them cutting our stream off or anything. So. It's okay. So. Are we good, Pete? <laughs> Okay, so, uh, yes, yeah, so getting organized in our monies um, is, is, is really huge. Um, and getting on the same page, if you are married, getting on the same page uh, about your monies and having those talks about it and coming up with a plan. Coming up with a plan is actually, is actually a biblical thing. Um, let me see here. I have a, a scripture for that. Um, where did I, where did I write it? She prepares for sermons like she packs well, yeah, Way I, <laughs> over does it. <laughs> oh, Proverbs 21.5. There's like 5. 40 scriptures here. We're Proverbs, not reading all of those Proverbs 21.5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. There is uh, godliness in creating order into your finances, okay? And that's, that's another talk for another day, but um, becoming organized in our money and being good stewards. The main thing is being good stewards of our money and how we, how we use our money wisely. The uh, next one I want to see that she wrote down, we're going to skip it quick because I know that um, good old brother Matt is going to be preaching in this series, and in it, he's going to hit this heavy, but I see Pastor Crystal had it written down as well, that one of the ways you free yourself of being weary is this rat race of comparison and competition, which leads to perfectionism, and so we want to, we're not going to hit that too heavy, I just want to warn you that as a, as it is dangerous to live your life comparing what you see, especially on social media, which is someone else's highlight reel versus your, your reality. So just comparing yourself to other people will wear you out. But and the next thing I see Pastor Crystal has written down, we okay, want to hit. I, I want to hit that because we, we do have some time. Um, <clears throat> I'm talking about perfectionism. Okay. So... For me, perfectionism has, has, has struck me very hard because I'm a doer and um, that's just part of my personality. But I don't want to go over this. I don't want to just go to the next one yet because we have about 10 minutes, okay? Um, but this, this is a big one because it creates a lot of stress. I know it's created a lot of stress in my life. Um, hey, let's, let's take an example, Christmas time, okay? I'm the kind of person that wants to give the perfect Christmas gift, Okay. I want to make sure that, you know, that person feels valued, that person feels loved. And so um, I have a friend who finishes her Christmas shopping in October. I mean, she will text me all the time, and she's like, Christmas is done. And she does it to get at me, you know, and she's like, Christmas shopping's done. And I'm like one of those parents that can't, 
I, I can't be finished yet because I know there's that perfect gift out there, you know? So I stress myself out trying to find the perfect gift. You know how I Christmas shop. Oh, yeah, he's out of control. But, but, but I'll be out on Christmas Eve. I don't need to. Uh, why are you done two months early? It doesn't make any sense. It's not even Christmas. <laughs> well, but the perfection, the, the idea of perfectionism, when it even comes to sim- simple things in our life. So this past year, I actually simplified things. And I told myself, why am I driving myself crazy? Why am I stressing myself out? And now that we have online shopping, things have gotten, you know, a, a lot easier too. But I love to get out in the stores. But I want to really take some time and thought into what I give people. And so I just feel like, eh, giving a gift card, is that really, you know, make someone feel special? Is that really making somebody feel valuable and, and things like that? You know, just handing them money so then we can exchange money. But this was the first year that I... I mean, works for me. Works for me, right? I mean, I'd I love to get gift cards. Give me a gift, gift card cards. and that Christmas sweater, right? Don't you love to get <laughs> gift cards? But uh, yeah, then that. But but for me, I this past year, I've just relinquished some of that control, relinquished some of that stress of of always having to you know give the perfect gift or the idea of perfectionism or wanting them to be you know give me a certain response um, of my Christmas gift. And I said, hey, those people that. They, I don't know what to get them. I'm going to get them a, a Christmas card or a, a gift card. And it just, it actually relieved so much stress in me. It was just the strangest thing. But, like, some ideas, like, we don't have, um, you know, I find it hard to take family pictures because this, and it stresses me out because I'm like, everyone has to wear every, it all has to be coordinated. And I see everybody else's pictures on Instagram and, you know, and it has to look just as good. And, and I'm, you know, f- you know, 10 pounds overweight right now. So I don't want to take the pictures because, you know, then w- what if the photographer doesn't oh my get my God. good angle and then I come out looking like the, the awful one in the picture. And, and these pictures are supposed to stick with me for the rest of my lives. And when I'm older, I'll be able to look at this picture and I'll, you know, and this, this stress comes <laughs> upon me about family pictures and it's so dumb you know but I'm adding this this unnecessary stress for my life just say just take the picture just just take the picture so these are these are just the idea of perfectionism always trying to uh all keep up in the idea of comparison keeping up with other people m- making my picture look just as great or decorating my home you, you guys know that like I have no pictures up on the wall right now because I'm afraid to do it wrong this idea of of perfectionism it halts me but I stress myself out over it and it's unnecessary and if I can relinquish this control if I can relinquish this perfectionism in my life then it because these are the things that I'm not really psychologically thinking about all the time but they're just these added stressors that I've added to myself and it's it's unnecessary um Another thing that we wanted to talk about was um, the success syndrome. And we'll just take a, a, a few minutes just to talk about how success syndrome, um, always feeling like you have to achieve to prove something to yourself or other people, um, causes this tiredness in our life. Yeah, I, I think that I probably, probably for me, I, I might want to steer clear of that one a little bit, only because I have so much to say about it. Because just for a minute. Well, I feel like with success syndrome, too many of us are living our lives for for the wrong approval. So, mom, maybe you're you're trying to prove something to a mom you or a dad you felt wasn't there, or maybe your mom or dad were overbearing, or maybe they weren't bearing enough or whatever. And so we overcompensate trying to prove stuff to ourselves, to them, and to our kids about how we're different or how we're better or whatever, but that doesn't just go in a, uh, the, the natural family. That goes in spiritual families. That goes in different, different things where we get so caught up in trying to be our version of successful that we don't realize that the only way to have success in God's eyes is by being obedient and faithful. If you're obedient and faithful to what God has called you to do, no matter how significant or insignificant people view what you do is then you'll have good success and you'll have peace because success and calling in in, that's all relative and in God's eyes if you're faithful to what he's put your hand to do that is what matters but we live for other people preachers live for the crowd or for their spiritual father or for their own ego 
I saw a well-known pastor that I have met personally uh, committed suicide, is what it looks like this week. Mega church pastor, had everything. And he did a podcast apparently a few weeks ago just talking about how his success led him to this place where he was constantly trying to live up to an image. And he said, I got tired of the Instagram, the social media, always having to be on. The, always trying to be on the circuit and preaching here, and preaching for this person, and preaching for that person, doing all this stuff. He said, I, I mastered social media, but I didn't master my own soul and my own theology. He's like, so while I was really good at doing the church thing and, and making people be blessed, my soul and my spirit was sick. I, he said, I was spiritually weak. My theology was inch deep. He said, but I was good at what people want in America today. And this guy had, if I said the people he preached with and for, then and all, almost all of you in my comments would probably know, know him. And it's crazy how he, he pretty much lost everything and was in a season of trying to recover, but he died from what I want to close out with. I know, Pastor Crystal, we're, we're, we're moving into this closing piece here. Something I, I want to call battle fatigue that sometimes you know they have something that psychologists talk about especially with soldiers what they call battle fatigue and some people call it ptsd and all and different things that people go through but there are people watching me right now you're a mom and you have never been on to iraq but you've been in a war uh mentally spiritually emotionally you know when you love deep and lose deep that hurts when you watch people die in front of you that you love, not just naturally, but spiritually, emotionally, when you watch relationships die, it crushes women when relationships sour because a woman was designed by God to do relationship. They were built for connection. When God created woman, brought her from the man, he spoke to her and said, deal with this joker. He built her for connection. A man, God said, tend this garden. He built a man to find success and, and worth in what he accomplished with his hands. A woman finds real success and worth when her relationships are healthy. And the, the thing is, it crushes. And there are people watching me, you have battle fatigue. You feel wore out from the fight. The enemy's been fighting you, your family's been fighting you, life's been fighting you. And when we have this false idea of success, this success syndrome, so to speak, and I can't wait for the day I get to share what's really on my heart about this to pastors, especially to pastors and leaders in pastors' conferences and things. You know, I, a lot of people want to get up on the stage and preach these great messages, and I love doing that. But the truth is, I would love to be able to be in some of these arenas just sit in a back room with 50 pastors and talk about what it's like to survive burnout. And, and this idea of trying to, to always, you know, with, when you do what I do, we do, we're never off of work. You never escape it. I don't get to go to Walmart and be off the clock. You know, me and Brother Matt talk about this, and he was telling me how he's, he's mastered the art of leaving work at work and how, how that's been healthy for him and his family. But for me, I don't have that option. I literally can't. I go to Walmart, and people see me, and that's the preacher, or that's Pastor Sean, or that's Pastor Crystal, or can you pray for me, or whatever. And, and the stuff, and you, if I... I've got voicemails right now that if I took my phone and put this microphone up to the voicemail and let you listen to it, some of you would probably want to drive off a cliff. The stuff that people message me and call me, you don't escape it. And with this idea of success, that we got something we're trying to prove. You know, there was a time in my ministry I had to, I had to really seek God and say, God, uh, show me show me how much of what I'm doing is all about you and me not trying to prove something to my dad. You see what I'm saying? We, we, we deal with that. So what I wanted to share with you as we begin to wrap up this morning, I wanted to share with you, uh, and I know, I know see Pastor Crystal has some here too, so I want her to share some as well and then, and then close out. But I want to share with you some practical tips I, I wrote down. To No, no, I'm just going to read these. Some practical tips to, to deal with fatigue. Some, some practical things to really think about. So first off, when you're dealing with fatigue and tired, you have to plan to set time apart for yourself. Um, Pastor Crystal says it this way as, as well. You know, make sure you're filling yourself up. No, take care of yourself. Yeah, well, take care of yourself. And I'm going to let her say, what are some ways that we can take care of ourselves? 
What would you say? Um, we could to take the moms care. out there, how, how you're saying take, you take care of you. What are you telling them to do? Um, for me, unplug. Like, unplug from, from everything, social media, unplug from, you know, just uh, for me right now, I mean, a good way to unplug is if we need to go to the store, I, I'll be the one to go to the store. That's kind of like a mini vacation for me right now. Let me walk around Walmart or Martin's, and that is me unplugging. Me sitting in my car, driving by Dunkin' Donuts and getting me a little ice cream, sitting in the parking lot before I go in. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, the, that's me unplugging. Um, and I think that's, you know, me taking care of myself and giving me my space. I, I've been telling... Him, I just, I need my space. Everything's bleeding together. I need my space. Um, so creating space for, for me time and taking care of myself. Um, you know, the kids don't have to stay up till, especially the little ones who need my attention and my time. They don't need to stay up late because now they don't have school. No, I tell Selena, hey, nine o'clock rolls around. You go in your room. Well, actually like 8.30. Uh, you go in your room. I don't care what you do in there. Play. I don't. It, just don't come out of there. Get out of my face. Right. <laughs> that, this is my time. <laughs> okay. Um, so we we've talked a lot about a lot of practical things to do today, or you know, spiritual things and practical things. But the main thing I know we're running out of time here um, is I, I put filling yourself up, and the title of this message was running on E. You know, running on empty. I'm the person that will wait. And wait and wait and that, you know, gas light comes on. And, hey, we still have 20 miles. Oh, you know, we not, still oh. have 50 miles. <laughs> you know, I'm that, I'm that person. I'm that scary person to drive with. Because, to me, that gas warning isn't actually you're empty. It's you're almost empty, you know. And, and this is kind of the way that I run my life. And it's not right is, you know, there's so many signs that I see. And I'm the kind of person, I'm an exploder. There's stuffers when it comes to um, handling situations, stressful situations, and there are people that stuff, and there are people that explode. Or stuff and until you explode. Stuff until you explode. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have that moment. Mom blew up, you know, like she's going off. That's you know, me. Ha having that moment. But, um, and I, we, we wanted to talk, uh, the last thing was just filling yourself up because we cannot ignore uh, the fact, we cannot ignore the fact that we have to fill ourselves up on God. And I, I'll tell you through this whole situation, every morning when I get ready, I will turn on some type of preaching, listen to Destination Church online, different pastors and preachers and churches that I follow. And that's what I've done for, for years, just, you know, while I'm getting myself up, at, you know, doing my makeup, doing my hair and getting ready, I'll be listening to something. And, you know, with through this whole pandemic, I've been finding myself, instead of listening to those preaching that I would normally be listening to, I found myself, you know, informing myself, listening to the news, kind of in the background, turning on the TV and listening and what's now newly, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the new data? What's the new information? How is this affecting us? Because I'm trying to stay informed. And, and God quickened me the other day, and, and he was like, why are you, you're not spending that time with me in the morning. You're not doing your regular routine. And I found myself really getting more agitated and frustrated. And because I haven't been, uh, because I'm, I'm out of my routine of everything and it's just causing everything to turn upside down that I haven't been, I mean, honestly spending that time that I would have normally because this, uh, the organization is out of our, or our chaos, it's chaos. And he quickened me and he was like, you know, you really need to fill yourself up again. You know, and there's nothing that's going to take that place of spending time with God. And it looks, for everyone, it looks different. You know, I love to read books that, you know, um, are, are Bible-based or faith-based books that are going to, apart from, you know, school books and things like that or educational books, but um, that are going to uh, go in, in line or in correlation with God's Word. That's one of the ways that I study the Word of God through that. Um, what are some ways that you... I mean, listening to praise and worship, you know, in your car or in your, in your free time, you know, actually sitting down and, and asking God, you know, just that sometimes I have to lock myself. I, I lock three doors. I lock my door. I lock, you know, the, the restroom door and I'm locked behind another door and I just have to get alone, you know, just like kids don't come near me and I have to have my space getting that alone time with God. Um, what about you ways that you can fill up on God and as we close? As we close, I think you've, you've given it all to them. I mean, the, the key is, I think that it's important to try to give the, the first parts of your morning 
uh, to the Lord. And I know when I'm in a bad place and struggling, sometimes I'll fall out of that routine. But one thing that I always do, I, I don't know when's the last time I haven't done this. It's developed a discipline in my life. Every day I wake up in the morning, every day, the first thing I do when I lay there, my eyes pop open, is I stop for a moment and I just pray. I mean, before my feet touch the ground, I let the Lord know that he's to be the author of my life. And I think that's important for us. I think we have to, in these moments of trying to, to really be free of being tired and locking the door and keeping that weariness out of our life, we have to remember that our strength comes from the Lord. And when you're trying to draw from any other source or any other well, that source is temporary at best. But when we fill up on the Lord, and don't just fill up on the Lord by yourself, find the right people in your life that you can connect to, people that add to you and don't just drain from you. And that will help you in not feeling so tired, connecting to the right people. And there's a, there's a lot of practical things we talked about. There's spiritual things we talked about. Of course, if you're watching this, if you, you, know, you eat right and you exercise and all these things, this stuff matters. Uh, however, when we let life just overwhelm us, man, whew, David said, I had to, when, when my heart was overwhelmed, I had to run to a rock that's higher than I. We all go through seasons in life where we feel overwhelmed, but you can grab a hold of something that's greater than you. And so this morning, can we pray for you? Can myself and my wife pray for you? Can we believe God for you and for your family, for every mom? We're just believing for you. And I know that people are watching me now that, that know Jesus, the majority of you. If you don't, we would like to let you know more about him. And we want to pray for you. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you'd like to know more about him, if you text New Day, text that to our connecting number. We'd like to connect with you and bring you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I pray for each and every one of you this morning? Father, we just come before you and we thank you for all of those that are watching. We thank you for our Destination Church family and friends. We thank you for every mother, every father, everyone that's watched. Just our candid discussion about our own life and how we've had to fight weariness and how we can lock it out of our life and quarantine ourselves from the forces of the enemy because the enemy wants to wear us out. But we know we can have joy, we can have strength, we can have passion to run this race for you, God. And we know that greater things are ahead of us than that's what's behind us, but we need to press. And so, Father, for that one right now that needs to have their fight back, God, I send your word into their house right now through this computer screen, through their phone, through their television. We send the word right now. We send the anointing of the Holy Spirit that tells that one that feels knocked down that you can get up again. You're tired, but you can have that second wind. You can breathe again. You can have that thing lifted from your life, and we just declare that over them right now in Jesus' name. And we decree and declare the favor, mercy, and presence of God rests upon everybody who's watching us this morning. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.